I liked her more when she was country. I did too. Like, I really liked her when I, I was younger love, growing uh, up. I love Sparks Fly. Loved it. The whole thing with the football player, just like, I just felt like, look, I'm sure she's a lovely person, but my boyfriend's a football player. <laughs> and I wear his jersey to the game with his number on it. 35 was a little old to be like. <sighs> Whatever makes her happy. No, oh, of course. If that's what she wants to do and it makes her happy, go on. He's gonna dump her though, you know that. Now I'm gonna be a Travis Kelce hater. He does that. Can you imagine the next album we're gonna get off of that? <laughs> you know you're gonna get dumped. You just don't know when. Right, so it must have had the songs about all the people that she wrote songs about. Coursing through her emotions, of course. It was breakup mm -hmm. stuff, so she's gonna write songs. I can't fault her for that. It does seem like such a recurrent theme that at some point you just, maybe you should write a song called, Maybe It's Me. Maybe it's me. <laughs> Just so. Hold on to your seats, gossip lovers, because we've got a lineup that'll have you gasping. First up, Taylor Swift is breaking her silence on the tragic mass knifing at a Taylor-themed dance class in Southport, leaving fans and families in shock. Our pop princess took to Instagram, pouring out her heartfelt condolences in a way only Taylor can. Next, we delve into Joe Alwyn's mysterious keepsake, a hand-stitched door hanging that has Swifties buzzing about its sentimental origins. Could it be a Taylor original? Meanwhile, Bill Maher is stirring the pot, predicting a breakup for Taylor and Travis Kelsey, with some choice words about their public displays of affection. Is another breakup anthem in the works? And in a heart-wrenching turn, Halsey shares a near-demise health scare revealing their battle with lupus and a rare T-cell disorder, leaving fans both shocked and supportive. Lastly, the Sussexes are in the spotlight as their social circle reportedly shrinks, with friends feeling pressure to pick sides in the royal family feud. Stay tuned for all the juicy details and more. Taylor Swift Speaks Out Taylor Swift has finally broken her silence after the shocking mass knifing at a Taylor Swift-themed dance and yoga class in Southport, England. The devastating incident left three younglings lifeless and eight others injured, with five in critical condition. In true Taylor fashion, she took to Instagram to pour her heart out to fans and victims' families, saying she's completely in shock. And you're hearing that there's been there's been injuries, some, you know, stabbings, etc. It, it does impact on you. Swift says she is in shock after three kids in England died in a stabbing attack during a dance class celebrating. Stood for this, the incident is not being investigated as a terror-related attack. She wrote, "The horror of yesterday's attack in Southport is washing over me continuously, and I'm just completely in shock." Our favorite pop princess continued to express her sorrow grappling with how to convey her sympathies to the families. She heartbreakingly noted, these were just little kids at a dance class, highlighting the senseless nature of the attack. Insiders reported that a 17-year-old male suspect has been arrested, but the incident is not being treated as terror-related. The whole community is reeling from this unexpected horror, and the swift action of emergency responders has been praised by many. Number of casualties um, have been injured, uh, one male's been detained, a knife has been recovered, and you're hearing that there's been there's been injuries, some you know, stabbings, etc. It it does impact on you. Swift says she is in shock after three kids in England died in a stabbing attack during a dance class celebrating stood for this. The incident is not being investigated as a terror-related attack. Even the royals chimed in. Prince William and Kate Middleton shared their condolences on social media, offering love, thoughts, and prayers to everyone affected. They also gave a shout out to the brave first responders who faced the grim scene with courage and compassion. Taylor's heartfelt response has struck a chord with her fans, who are also grappling with the tragedy. As always, she manages to put into words what so many are feeling, making this heartbreaking event a little more bearable for everyone involved. Joe's nostalgic keepsake. It seems Joe Alwyn might still be holding onto a piece of his past with Taylor Swift, Fans recently spotted an intriguing detail in a video Joe posted on Instagram, a hand-stitched door hanging prominently displayed in his apartment. The buzz? Many believe this charming craft was made by none other than Taylor herself, who has a well-documented love for sewing. This isn't the first time Joe has shared snaps of the embroidered creation, having previously posted a cozy photo of it resting on his lap in September. The embroidered piece has sparked quite the discussion among fans and insiders, especially given Taylor's penchant for creating handmade gifts for those close to her. Known for stitching heartfelt items for friends and exes, Taylor has previously crafted a personalized token for Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner, and even a beautiful blanket for Katy Perry's daughter, Daisy Dove. 
Could this door hanging be another of her sentimental creations? Taylor's latest album, The Tortured Poets Department, even features lyrics that seem to nod to her love of embroidery, making the connection all the more plausible. While Joe has remained tight-lipped about the significance of the door hanging, he's previously expressed the complexities of navigating life post-breakup with such a high-profile partner. So, is this embroidered token a sweet memento from a past love, or just a piece of decor Joe happens to fancy? Regardless, it's clear that the fans are loving the mystery and the romantic speculation it brings. Marr says breakup imminent. Bill Marr didn't mince words on his podcast, Club Random, where he threw some major shade at Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's relationship. Chatting with Haley Welch, aka the Hawk Tua girl, Marr confidently predicted that Kelsey would eventually dump Swift. He had quite the hot take, calling out Swift's super public displays of affection like rocking Kelsey's Kansas City Chiefs jersey as high school-level drama that might just be too much for the NFL star to handle. Marr didn't stop there. He threw down the gauntlet with a spicy comparison, saying Swift's love life is like a Gatorade shower at the Super Bowl. You know the breakup's coming, it's just a matter of when. Despite Welch trying to keep things positive, saying Swift should do what makes her happy, Marr was all in on the idea that this romance has an expiration date. He even joked that Swifties could expect another breakup anthem, maybe titled Travis, adding to her legendary lineup of ex-inspired hits like Dear John. I liked her more when she was country. I did too. Like, I really liked her when I, I was love, younger growing uh, up. Sparks Fly, loved it. The whole thing with the football player, just like I just felt like, look, I'm sure she's a lovely person, but my boyfriend's a football player, <laughs> and I wear his jersey to the game with his number on it. 35 it was a little old to be like. <sighs> Whatever makes her happy. No, oh, of course. If that's what she wants to do, and it makes her happy. Go on. To top it off, Mar took a swipe at Swift's tendency to turn her exes into chart-topping hits, calling it tacky and hinting that maybe she should reflect on the pattern. He cheekily suggested a song called Maybe It's Me, nodding to Swift's own lyrics from Antihero where she admits, it's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. I would say for the, for the, biggest, the biggest thing was uh, getting my body right. You know, last year was pretty taxing on my, uh, on my body, but uh, I know it, it has taken a toll on my body, so it's just, you know, making sure that my body's getting that rest and that, that ability. While Mars out here predicting doom, Swifties are busy celebrating the anniversary of Kelsey's first bold move to win Swift's heart. The big question now is, will Mars crystal ball prediction come true, or will the Swifties have the last laugh? He's going to dump her, though. You know that. Now I'm going to be a Travis Kels hater. He does that. Can you imagine the next album we're going to get off of that? <laughs> you know you're going to get dumped. You just don't know when. Right, so it must have had the songs about all the people that she wrote songs about coursing through her emotions of course it was breakup stuff so she's gonna write songs I can't fault her for that it does seem like such a recurrent theme that at some point you just maybe you should write a song called maybe it's me maybe it's me <laughs> <laughs> just so Halsey's health scare Halsey the beloved pop icon recently opened up about a terrifying experience that left fans stunned the without me singer who goes by she they pronouns took to Tumblr to share the harrowing details of battling lupus and a rare T-cell disorder. Halsey confessed that they almost lost their life while struggling with these illnesses, all while trying to keep up with the pressures of the music industry. The singer's heartfelt post unveiled a side of Halsey that many fans had never seen before. They expressed regret over returning to music, citing the relentless negativity from fans as a major burden. According to insiders, Halsey feels that their own fans have become meaner than anyone else leaving them questioning their place in the spotlight. The singer's emotional message, accompanied by a tearful Instagram post, laid bare the toll this online hate has taken on their mental health. Halsey's recent singles, The End and Lucky, reflect these struggles, with lyrics that poignantly describe their health battles. They even shaved their head multiple times, both as a personal choice and due to their illness. The songs serve as a raw musical diary of the challenges they faced, from brain and skeletal pain to the emotional turmoil of feeling unloved by their own fan base. Despite the outpouring of support following their disclosure, Halsey remains apprehensive about their future in music. They share that while they are managing their conditions, the journey has left them questioning the very essence of their career and happiness. I told myself I'm giving myself two more years to be sick. Today is day one. I'm gonna look super hot and have lots of energy, and I'm just gonna get to redo my 20s and my 30s. In 30, 
I'm having my... Just chill on your body. You know I'm, yeah, I'm a 30, I'm having a rebirth. And I wasn't being sensitive and it wasn't all in my head, but it also kind of sucked. Metriosis. And it was so bittersweet because it was like um, the relief of knowing I wasn't making it all up to know that I was going to be living with this forever. Sussex's friend circle shrinks. Oh, the royal drama never ends. It seems Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are facing a bit of a friend dilemma. According to insiders, friends of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are feeling the pressure to pick sides between them and Prince William. Yes, you heard that right. It's a royal choose-your-team situation. Recently, royal expert Katie Nicole dished on Vanity Fair's podcast about how the Sussex's social circle is tightening. Apparently, their pals are being put in the awkward position of having to declare their loyalty. This became glaringly obvious when Harry was notably absent from the wedding of Hugh Grosvenor the Duke of Westminster, while Prince William attended. Sources say Harry was asked to skip the event to avoid any awkward tension. Yikes! But that's not all. The royal gossip mill is buzzing with talk about Harry and Meghan's social life in Montecito, California is not as star-studded as many expected. Katie Nicole expressed her surprise at the lack of A-list mingling. Sure, they've hung out with Kevin Costner, who's great, but where's the hobnobbing with Oprah or Gwyneth Paltrow? It seems the couple might be opting for a quieter, more private lifestyle, far away from the prying eyes of the paparazzi and celebrity magazines. Despite stepping back from their royal duties in 2020, it appears the Sussexes aren't entirely out of the spotlight. There are rumors of exclusive behind-closed-doors dinner parties at their Montecito mansion, but fans were left wondering when Harry and Meghan skipped Oprah Winfrey's 69th birthday bash, considering their close friendship led to that bombshell interview in 2021. So what's the deal? Are they laying low to avoid the drama, or is there more going on behind the scenes? Only time will tell, but for now it looks like the Sussexes are navigating some tricky social waters. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.